Netball used to be one of the most important things in Nat Panagari's life, but that's all changed. Last year, Nat's wife Katie was diagnosed with stage 4 clear cell cancer, and life as they knew it was turned upside down. Suddenly, playing netball for England and Loughborough Lightning paled into insignificance for Nat, compared to what she and her wife were facing. Unsurprisingly, it has been a roller coaster. Hospital appointments, chemotherapy and having to tackle hurdles no one in their 30s expects to face. As Nat admits in this podcast, there were moments of anger. Why them? That's a question many in their situation would be asking. But there have also been moments of hope and happiness. In November, the pair tied the knot, and countless messages of support they have received as they share their journey on social media have been overwhelming. While the focus is very much on Katie's battle with the disease, Nat and her wife are determined to raise as much awareness as possible. It's so powerful to hear. One charity who performs such vital work in that area is Look Good, Feel Better, who are partnering with England Netball for the return of their annual charity netball tournament on Sunday, March the 26th, to raise awareness and funds for the charity. Taking place at Warwick University, you'll be hearing more about this event in the episode and you can follow a link to the tournament in the show notes. And of course, playing netball for Loughborough is still a key part of Nat's life, as is clear in her interview, and particularly now that the 2023 Netball Super League season is back up and running. But Katie's inspiration and the hurdles the couple face together are a key reminder of the larger things in life, and how much you can take from the person you love the most despite going through some of the toughest episodes imaginable. Nat, welcome to the podcast. A pleasure to welcome you onto the show. How is everything at the moment? Because I imagine it's pretty busy, days flying by. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, it has been a little bit of a roller coaster the last few weeks, but kind of for me personally, I've just started my Super League season, so it was kind of round one on Saturday, and we kind of got off to a win, so a very good start for us, but it's kind of all systems go now, you're in the season, and kind of getting to hopefully that final come June is the plan, Um, but kind of a lot going on also behind the scenes, like kind of with my partner and kind of home life, so very busy at the minute, but kind of enjoying kind of juggling juggling the two and kind of having my outlet as well through netball kind of really helps me yeah I was going to say obviously as we record we're one game into the new Super League season um like you said it was a win so happy days does it does it help you to have that back up and running so you kind of got that additional focus in your life yeah, I think so. I think kind of for me, netball's always been kind of my outlet somewhere where I'm happy and comfortable and sport in general's been like that. So it, it yeah, it is somewhere where I feel like I can relax and with everything that's kind of been going on a little bit with my partner and wife, I suppose that took a little bit of a back step for a little bit of a period. And it was somewhere where I had to fully focus on her for a little while. So actually I, I kind of stopped training for a little bit. I kind of left England camp. I think it was maybe October last year and I wasn't really training for a little while. So kind of love for lightning my club and the England Roses have been amazing supporting me. And I've been very honest in saying, I actually don't know how I will handle it at, at this point. For me, it's an amazing outlet. And for me and my mental health and uh, physical health, it's important for me to still do it. However, there could be a point when I get further into the season where actually maybe I just can't balance it all and, and one thing has to give and that would be netball. So they've been really supportive. They understand that kind of it is kind of a what if situation and anything can turn up. But but currently I'm kind of really enjoying having it and, and just kind of a bit of normality for me as well. Yeah, like I say, normality helps a lot doesn't it and you kind of alluded to it there part of the reason we're recording this episode now is to tie in with England Netball partnering cancer support charity look good feel better for the return of their annual charity netball tournament to raise money and awareness for the charity that takes place on Sunday March 26th and we'll obviously talk about the event a little bit more as this episode goes on but cancer affects so many of us whether it's us individually, friends, family, loved ones, you name it. I think there's plenty of people who can relate to it. And it's obviously a very close issue to you now 
because your wife Katie was was diagnosed with stage four clear cell cancer last year. I mean, it must be I say unimaginably difficult, and like I say, you're going into a whole bunch of unknowns really for yourself trying to manage sport as well as the personal situation right now. Do you want to just take us through kind of the, those steps up to that that diagnosis and I suppose what it was like for the both of you to to ultimately hear that, really? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, yeah, for us it has obviously completely changed our lives and completely thrown us and, and I think everyone kind of kept saying to us, you just kind of kept put on this roller coaster without kind of, you, you don't want to be there, your life's going well. We, we thinking about maybe getting married in a few years and things and then it just hits you doesn't it one day so um it was kind of last year um uh, 2021 probably December Katie would kind of tell you that she probably was starting to have symptoms at that point however she was around kind of 33 at that point and just kind of thought maybe it was just kind of menstrual cycle and things going on a little bit just kind of her normal that she's always kind of had since she was a baby so didn't really think anything of it and it kind of went a few months kind of 2022 and I think it kind of got until April and she thought no I need to go to a doctor now it's actually one of her close friends at work said said you need to go to a doctor and so she went in April she kind of had two colonoscopies and they thought maybe she just had a few bowel issues that was coming up. Um, and then kind of actually the doctor at the time didn't really say kind of anything about cancer. She was 34 then. And um, just maybe that she had a few issues going on and, and piles and things. And so I think kind of mentally, we both maybe kind of thought that that was the outcome and everyone seemed quite positive that that was it. Um, and then unfortunately, she had a CT scan in August. Um, and then we actually got a call pretty much within three weeks. Um, and unfortunately for Katie, she got the phone call instead of face to face just because they wanted to get to her in that soon and there wasn't an appointment for her at the hospital. So I was away with England at England camp. She was actually here working from home on her own and unfortunately got that phone call from the doctor. So I was very apologetic. It was over the phone and it was never planned that way. But unfortunately, she had to get in quite soon. And, and the only slot was to tell her that day. So kind of from then, it, it, it's been an absolute roller coaster. I, I came home from England camp straight away. We had scans and meeting oncologists who were in the hospital I'd actually never been to St. James before and kind of before you know it, that's actually becomes pretty much home. And just for Katie, you just can't imagine someone's world being changed that much and kind of hearing those words that you've got cancer at 34. Um, so I think that's why for her, it's been so important to show her journey and and that cancer isn't just for someone that's older and, and it isn't just for someone also in their 30s. You know, people are, are so young having this awful disease as well. And I think it is kind of a stigma that it is for an older generation. And she wanted to, to make sure that people understood that if there's a change in your body, no matter what age, to go to a doctor and kind of, especially for females and female health and um, kind of uh, female health in general I think we kind of just think oh this this will be fine this will pass it's normal you're going through your menstrual cycle these cramps are normal whereas actually there's been chronic pain and, and change in your bowel for females it's really important it isn't it isn't the normal when you're going through your cycle so that was something for her that she just kept putting off because she just thought it was and we actually found out that she's had endometriosis since she was a baby so she's had awful periods but kind of just always assumed that was kind of normal Normal. and you know maybe if that got pulled up when she was younger or she'd gone to a doctor earlier about it and maybe this kind of wouldn't have developed um, a little bit further but kind of for her actually her cancer spread from um, her womb lining into her bowel and that actually was the bowel showing her that she actually had a tumour so she kind of is really grateful for, for her bowel to be honest because that is the only way she actually found out she had the growth and the tumour was coming through and I think since we've been through this journey we've realised how important the bowel is and your bowel health and gut health and, and she's kind of really plugging that as well and kind of on her social media and mine kind of looking after yourself so yes it's been it's been different to normal and and but we cannot thank the support that we've had it's been overwhelming we kind of went a little bit silent on social media for maybe about six weeks um I think just trying to deal with it internally with our family and close friends just all new and I kind of told my work in England netball and love for light and who were great and then from there she made the decision that she wanted to share the story and what she's been through and and she's had kind of major surgery and then got into chemotherapy now currently so 
Um, it was actually Adele Roberts that she actually saw online as well, kind of going through a few of her bowel symptoms when she said she had bowel cancer. And actually a few of those resonated with her. And that was kind of one of the reasons when, and also her friend telling her to go to doctor was why she went. So she's always said if if maybe she helps one person like that, just kind of saying her symptoms or these signs, and if it makes one kind of young person or older person kind of go to a doctor and just kind of make sure we're checking and looking after ourselves, that's kind of her main focus now as well. And like I say, shows the power of, you know, putting your story out there and showcasing it to others. You mentioned Adele Roberts there. And if she can have that impact to someone else, then that's that's so worthwhile, isn't it? And to pick up on a couple of bits you mentioned, and obviously the age thing, you're both in your 30s. I'm 30 myself. And you just don't think of something like that at this stage in your life. Like you say, you just kind of consider it as an older generation thing and something that you have to contend with. I imagine that was much the same to you. And then suddenly it hits you. Yeah, definitely. I think when we were kind of at the doctor, as they did kind of kind of mention it once, and like that's kind of the 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 ultimate we, that would be our kind of last resort to think of. And you kind of just think, yeah, yeah, surely not. Surely that's kind of something when I'm seventies, eighties, and I'm a lot older, and, and my body's been through a little bit more. And you know, she's fit and healthy. She doesn't drink a lot. She doesn't smoke, and she just kind of regular walk for the dog. She exercises. So there was kind of nothing kind of indicating that that maybe would happen. Um, so it, it was an absolute complete shock and, and, and kind of it threw us for a long time. And I think for me, it, watching her has, has been incredible because there was a period where I was very angry. I felt like kind of we had a lot to kind of, we've just kind of renovated our whole house. We've got like a, um, a sausage job. We had lots of things planned and kind of thinking of our wedding in a few years time, potentially having children. So I kind of felt like we had a lot of things kind of, hopefully going to happen and this kind of has paused life in a sense I, I felt really angry with that but then actually as, as we've gone on I think that kind of started to slide away and realize that you know life doesn't have to be paused and we we can still live life it's just a different way at the minute trying to get her healthier and the amount of support that we've had to kind of realize that at, at the hospital um at St James is just the NHS in general offering their support and kind of like I said Maggie's um as well have just been amazing our family and friends just we've still had so many good times on this journey since we got the diagnosis and some amazing memories have still happened since she's had cancer and had the diagnosis so it's making sure there's obviously going to be a lot of bad days but there still is a lot of good days and and I think actually since I've gone through this that's one thing I kind of keep trying to tell people that maybe share their story with me on social media and that they're going through it or or their family are or their friends and it is just offering that support that if you do have a good day really seize it and kind of take that moment if they're healthy enough. Is, is that one of the big things as well because you, you obviously mentioned the anger and I suppose there's an element of asking what why you two like why does this happen to to you like say when you've got so much planned in your life and I mean is that one of the things that you really really have to come to terms with and maybe take it each day at a time and accept that there are going to be rubbish days yeah definitely I think we both both of us appear will be like kind of was it from this was it from that it, it just mean she, obviously for Casey she was obviously I should have gone to the doctor sooner she knew she had kind of symptoms in December 2021 and that whole what if I'd have gone then if I'd have gone then is, is the tumor not as big by the time I've gone to the to the hospital in April and we we actually spoke to her oncologist a lot and, and they've been so supportive but, and kind of said it 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 kind of for her she's lucky enough that it wouldn't have made much difference to the growth and the size of it she'd already kind of had the spread by then um and kind of unfortunately as well that's I think the difference a lot of time if you do have womb cancer or, or kind of that ovarian cancer it's really hard to kind of get those symptoms because some women just have none and then one day they'll have one symptoms and there's already that huge growth so it, it is so unfortunate and that's that whole thing of why me why why is this happening I'm so unlucky and this and that and and your brain could just spiral and you kind of get put in that and and we definitely were in it and there's no denying that we were and but I think we've had to work quite hard to get out of it and, and just kind of leaning on people, having that support and just allowing that feeling sometimes and, and feeling it, but then realising that actually, no, what what can we do? What what can we do now? What are our steps going forward? And I think it's such a massive journey and they kind of go through that whole journey with you. 
and it just feels like it's never ever ending so for us we found it a lot easier kind of going in little shorter sections of kind of six week blocks and that's kind of helped us mentally in a sense of she was going into hospital having major surgery let's deal with that and recovery and then we go into the chemo section and then we'll go into the section actually after chemo where we just kind of told there's no cancer in your body but the what if is still there and who knows if it will return and that's kind of another section that we'll have to deal with so that's kind of helped us kind of parking it in that way and just kind of dealing with those as we go on breaking it down so to speak each each bit at a time and to quickly touch on the endometriosis side of things as well that you, you mentioned and i mean it's, it's something that has often been raised in probably recent times recent years as you know plenty of people have it but still this it's it still widely goes undiagnosed still doesn't really get talked about as it should do and again does that tap into like if, if we talked about something like that a lot more often and actually diagnose those things properly i think leah williamson of uh, the lionesses is someone that pops into my head who has recently spoken about it in her own experience and if we could make progress in that area then maybe that will help something like your wife is is facing a hundred percent. And and I know kind of in March it's actually endometriosis month and kind of raising awareness. And I actually asked my younger sisters because they're 13 and 14 and kind of could just start in kind of their journey as, as a kind of young female and if they knew anything about it and, and they had no clue what it was. So I think kind of it is something that I feel like passionately that this kind of needs to start within schools and kind of young young females and health and raising awareness of it that everybody's health and menstrual cycle is very different don't get me wrong there's obviously a lot of things that can have happened to you individually however chronic pain where you can't do day-to-day -day jobs and and that massive fatigue and all of these things that actually stop females every day doing things is not normal and it has to be something that we ha have to make sure that we protect females for and you see females going into work it, and it is unbearable for them and, and how they're meant to do a day-to-day -day job and drive a vehicle and do a nine-to-five and look after children it, it is just crazy to me that they're expected to do it so yeah and that is something that Katie did all these years she's just been trying to maintain it taking a lot of paracetamol to get through some of those days where unfortunately maybe if there was more awareness and, and she maybe could have gone to a doctor a little bit soon and maybe something could have been caught yeah like i say fingers crossed that does happen and i think now that the, the conversation is starting then hopefully there can be some some progress on that front very broadly how how is katie now yeah she's she's been incredible so far just I, i've always thought she is such a tough little northern cookie anyway um and i've always pretty much idolized her for that in general um born and bred in halifax just me i would not mess with that yorkshire girl at all um but obviously she has her days and we have our ups and downs but for, for me just watching her i've just been in absolute awe and and she's gone through her fifth round of chemo yesterday um she's currently upstairs working she'll be back at work all this week bar maybe friday afternoon she may not do but then she'll be back at work on monday morning so obviously every single person's journey is very different and their health and and she struggled a lot with the symptoms but she just has this inner strength she's managed to kind of tap into and find and I think for me obviously when I'm trading I think I'm sore and my body's hurting I'm like there's absolutely nothing I can't even really mention it now there's there's nothing that will compare to what she's going through so it makes it definitely easier for me at training now that I'm absolutely fine and my 32 year old legs can get on with it when I'm <laughs> down the court after the young ones but yeah she's she's doing really well we're just kind of getting to her sixth round I think kind of once we get to there like I said it'll be that next stage then of mentally how she and kind of I and, and as a family how we kind of move forward from then yeah because I, I, again I think people can forget how grueling the, the treatment can be sometimes it's like having to, to face all of that as well as life and work and everything like that and she must just be she's such an inspiration to you when you see what she goes through and having to balance all of this at the same time. Yeah, the, the side effects are just, just horrendous. And I suppose that is something that, again, when, when you've not really known anyone with cancer, or, and I, I actually haven't been around anyone within my life so far, and, and neither has Katie. So I think for the two of us, you know, you sometimes can and can see people who look quite poorly kind of um, visibly, and then but actually don't really internally know what is going on and, and how they're handling it. And, and 
it, it is brutal on the body. You know, chemotherapy is known to just kill everything in its sight. So anything healthy, it's getting rid of as well. And and then just kind of seeing kind of the weakness and the fatigue that she has. And I mean, she 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 loves a dog walk. We love going for walks, and she still does it every single day. But even a flight of stairs would be something she has to sit down at the top just because her body's gone through so much and just because the lungs are working so hard. So it is absolutely brutal and. Um, it's difficult to watch kind of as a partner and someone that, that loves her so much, but just kind of seeing her get through that first week and then from there it just getting a little bit slightly better from then on. Yeah. And from your perspective, and like just picking up on that, you know, her partner, wife, love her so much. And there's so much, I suppose, an innate human emotion to really want to make things better and try and I say it's 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 controlling what you wanting to control what you can't control. And we were so often told about, you know, you can only control the controllable. And a lot of the time you've got to make peace with the fact that you can't make everything better as much as you may want to. And then for your own sort of the mental well-being, I imagine that's something you probably had to face up to quite a lot on this journey. Yeah, kind of massively what you just said there is me down to a T. Kind of I love controlling things, love controlling kind of my diary, my life, and things are very regimented. I think they've been like that since I was a kid, just because of sport and just I mean you're busy on these days, you train this day and you would sort school out, when can I do this exam? And everything's always been quite strict for me growing up in that sense to kind of make sure I schedule everything. So I think that's kind of me as a person and my mum is very similar. So I think it's kind of come down to me. And you're right, it, it's, I have absolutely no control of this or the outcome or what will happen. And we put all our trust and our faith in the incredible NHS and the hospital and the experts. And and you can only do what they say and what they say goes to hopefully help her. And there's obviously little things we can do behind the scenes to hopefully keep increasing her, her health and kind of her energy. But it does come down to kind of them and having no control over it. So mentally for me, that has been huge and, and a massive battle. And, and realizing that now I can't schedule what we do and it ha- we have to be quite relaxed and fluid and just mean we may have something planned one day but some days she just c- can't get out of bed and we can't do it and having to be a little bit more flexible and relaxed kind of goes against my personality completely um but actually I think it has been good for me because I, I am, have been a very strict person with myself a little bit so being a little bit more fluid is something I need to get better at still. Um, but definitely this has made that actually have to happen. Oh, yeah, so it's one way to learn as well. And to kind of bring it into the sports side a little bit, because we, we we have so many conversations on this podcast about you know sports psychology, the, the mental approach to sport and trying to perform at your best, so to speak. Have there been things you've been able to draw into your personal life now from the sport side of things? Or is it has a, a, a bit like you've just said, really readjusting because in sport you can control it to a certain extent, whereas this is a completely different kettle of fish? Yeah, I think you're right. I think I have probably tapped into it a little bit. Like, like my mum kind of mentioned to me the other day, she just feels like I'm a little bit on a roller coaster and um, there will be a day where there is a bit of a breakdown coming. But I think it kind of does feel very much for me, I am tapping into that side of, I mean, things get thrown at you a lot in sport and then that pressure and how do you handle the pressure and what's the next step forward that you take from it. So I feel like, yeah, it probably has worked in my favour that I've got experience from that as an athlete, taking it into this and trying to be a bit more relaxed. Like you said, one of my favourite quotes is that and my head coach, one of them actually says, Nat, you can only control what you can control. Because growing up, I used to be quite a player that was, if I made an error, it, it would completely throw me. Or if something else happened with an error with somebody else, it, I would get frustrated and it would kind of show in my game that I wasn't relaxed or, or at ease. And that's been something she's constantly said to me probably since I was kind of mid-20s, now going into my 30s. So I think it's something I'm trying to get better at. But yeah, I've definitely tapped into that and, and trying to see that there's more outcomes can come and there's also different journeys you can go on to get to an outcome and and not everything has to be kind of this certain way because who knows what her journey is going to be going forward yeah, every, everyone's got their own journey ultimately i think so often we're all guilty of sometimes forgetting that and comparing things and and you name it but you did you did allude to obviously there's a roller coaster in itself but great days as well and i think back in november you actually got married and that must have been just unimaginably special 
considering everything that's been going on. Yeah, it it was amazing actually because we we always spoke about do we want a huge wedding or a small wedding or a broad wedding? And to be honest, the two of us probably would never have decided. So who even knows if we would have got married at the end? <laughs> I think with everything going on, we just thought let's get married, let's have a day for you to look forward to. And kind of in between coming out of hospital from a surgery before chemotherapy, we actually had it then so we, it, we, I think we kind of organized it in maybe two weeks in the end so there was kind of no no fuss no drama we ended up having 60 of our close friends and family that literally had three four weeks notice and a drop of a hat were there on on a Saturday in Leeds and in the middle of November it was kind of blue sky which never happens in Leeds so I was like there's this meant to be a good thing today and it, it was just incredible and she was amazing she'd literally been out of hospital for major surgery I think in a four-week turnaround she she was there in heels kind of tottering around Leeds and I, I think everyone was just in absolute awe of her strength that day and just her celebrating with everyone and, and I think it made it even more special with everything that was kind of going on with us as, as a family and our friends and it was definitely a day that we'll just never forget. Yeah, and I say sounds amazing, and that's not just because the blue sky came out in Leeds, but just the the whole the whole day. I suppose it gives you an opportunity and almost that, that sense of pride that people can see in her what you see in her on a daily basis. Oh yeah, definitely. I think, I, like I said, I've always said she's a tough cookie, and and she's been through a lot already within her her personal life. Kind of, she lost her dad at a young age, who who kind of raised her solely. So she's she's always to me been someone who I've completely idolised. And I think you're right. I think even even my friends just kind of saw a different side to her, and and that that inner strength that she has. And yeah, I just call always called her my kind of my my superhero. Um, but yeah, I think it was kind of really visible and um. My family as well have absolutely adored Katie since I've kind of met her. But I kind of even for them now, just, they just see her kind of as a as a third daughter now, and everyone is just obsessed with her. So yeah, I think just just fingers crossed. We're just trying to stay as positive as we can on this journey and kind of see what happens over the next few years. Absolutely. I mentioned earlier about obviously the Super League season has started, and you, know, you look back at the end of last season and what happened in the the grand final with Loughborough. See, uh, losing to Manchester Thunder, but then I, sp- I suppose that the disappointment that a lot of people, a lot of athletes would face in that uh, situation, does it? I mean, have it has it kind of reevaluated your approach to all of that, everything that's been going on, um, and whether it's you've kind of taken away some learnings, and now with the, with the new season approaching as well, that like you say, not really knowing how it's going to go with your headspace yeah definitely I think from that grand final I think I could tell there was learnings within me anyway just because I think when we had a grand final something very similar happened where one of our players had gone down with their ACL within the first five minutes that same thing happened in, in pretty much the same area of the court so I think for a lot of us that have been in the club for a while who kind of were reliving that kind of final last time it was kind of a deja vu moment and to be honest, I don't actually really remember the final at all. Kind of those next kind of 56 minutes were a complete blur. And 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 to be honest, I was just so focused on kind of my friend being so injured. And I've, I've never heard someone scream as much with an ACL. So I kind of knew it was more than an ACL. So I was kind of more worried about her her future, being able to walk and, and just being, being fit and healthy. Um, so I kind of was incredibly proud of the team because a lot of the young ones massively stepped up and were kind of leading that fight. I don't think I said anything as a captain, even Hannah Joseph as a vice captain. We didn't really even speak. I think we were just in absolute shock and just wanting to get to the end of the game. And they completely led the whole way. So for me, culture is huge as an athlete, as a captain. And it's something I pride of kind of myself and the team on at Loughborough. But I only think you can really talk about culture and see if it's tested when things actually happen you know people can have a good culture if they're winning because everything's comfortable and everything's happy do you have that same good culture if actually you've been tested or you're having a loss Mm. or down and that was a, a true testament to us that those young ones stepped up they absolutely thrived in that moment they lifted the team and at one point I think we were over 20 down and everyone knew the game had gone but I think actually we lost the game by seven in the end which was just absolutely incredible I think in netball because with that caliber of team we were up against it could have easily blown out even further 
So I remember being just like incredibly proud, but obviously also really sad for my friend. And that's all I cared about within that that moment. And obviously, like you say, with everything that's happening now, I think it's made me realise that netball probably was, I mean, is one of the most important things going on in my life, 100%. But it isn't the most important thing. And, and that's something that I need to realise. It's something that I love, something I enjoy. It's my job. However, it just mean there is a lot more going on and I need to make sure that I'm happy and ticking off other boxes for me able to thrive more in netball. So in kind of pre-season, I was saying I feel like I'm playing some of my best netball because I probably am a bit more relaxed with myself and, and the outcome and I want to win. That desire is there. Do not get me wrong. I want to lift that trophy more than ever this season. However, my approach has probably changed a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is that one of the big ways you've maybe changed as a person or are there other ways that you've maybe changed along this journey as well yeah I think that's one of them definitely I, I was always someone who who probably mentally openly as I do struggle and I do kind of struggle kind of in those big games and kind of just how do I perform well and that pressure and it is someone where especially kind of maybe as captain you feel like you have to you have to perform I have to lead the squad I have to do this and for a few years especially at the start being involved with lightning it felt very much like I have to do everything I have to be that person I think as I've kind of grown and got a little bit older I think it's realizing that it doesn't have to just be me it's not just because I'm captain doesn't mean I'm the only voice or I'm the only one that's talking or I'm the only one that's got the intensity I'm the only one with the drive it's it's actually realizing the whole point is to make everyone feel like they can do that, no matter what age or what position, if you're in, in on the starting seven in the 12 or you're on the bench and, and in the stands that everyone has exactly the same role, no matter what title. And I think I've got better as that as I've got older and, and, and probably the last few years especially got probably even better at it. And even this year with the club, I suppose I'm club captain, but the amount of people that are kind of leading things currently, because there is times where I'm not there, I'm not at some sessions due to Katie's chemotherapy or Katie, uh, Katie's health. So other players are stepping up and taking that role. So it, it just feel very much more relaxed maybe in the club. And I think that's probably maybe due to me being a bit more relaxed within the role as well. Almost like the control, the controllable again, because let's say it's so easy for you to think that you have to be responsible for everything, even though no one's actually said it to you. But as I say, it's the the pressure that you just put on yourself and maybe letting that go a little bit as well. Throughout this all as well, for the two of you, for you and Katie, are there any big lessons you've kind of learned along the way as well? I think it's actually made us closer as as a couple, I would say. I think think we were close anyway, but actually for me, I've been living in Luff for the last few years, kind of Monday to Thursday, and I've been away, and I would come home just at the weekends and, and go to games and things. So we've actually been together now 10 years, but actually this is kind of the first year and a half where we've actually lived together full time and actually been around each other. Um, so we were kind of joking in the last year going, gosh, I wonder if we actually do get off. <laughs> actually, this is where to work. So we're not normally around each other so much, but this whole whole situation has definitely made us closer and kind of brought us together and kind of made us kind of unify as 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 a two really and kind of leaning on each other a little bit more I think we're both the same whereas like I said we try and control everything and you always put on that kind of strong face and keep fighting and keep moving on and sometimes you just can't do that and I think we've been a bit more open with each other if one of us is struggling a bit more and not being afraid of saying that a little bit and not trying to put on the face as much so there's definitely been growth with us, with us individually but also kind of together a little bit more yeah and that's like I mentioned just before we started recording as well about just seeing that journey on you know Instagram updates and things like that and it's so inspirational the two of you and just and, and what you know you're facing but the way you're tackling it as well to go back to the the netball event that I mentioned earlier as I said it takes place on Sunday March 26th um, and there'll be coaching from England netball professionals at this event it takes place at Warwick University plenty of prizes goodie bags for teams and players that enter as well uh, for player entries it's 35 pounds and for spectator entry it's five pounds uh, we'll put a link to the, the web page for the tournament in the show notes of this podcast episode so people can go and uh, have a look find out more details about it if you want to from your perspective though the charity look good feel better and having events like this 
how important are things like this for like say raising awareness but also supporting charities that do such important work yeah it's it's absolutely huge and like you said raising awareness and and just that support and helping people living with cancer it, it is so important and um i'm just so excited that kind of the england netball has, has been involved this is obviously i think their fourth year kind of running this tournament and and it's been amazing to see kind of a lot of the england netball girls kind of this season i've seen them promoting it seen them putting on their social media i've had messages of people that have signed up themselves and teams are going so having the connection with england netball i mean incredibly proud of them and making sure they're involved in kind of these amazing charities and, and kind of helping them raise more awareness because that's what we need we they need more funding we need people to engage more and kind of spread that word so i'm really hoping it, it's a massively another successful day and, and fingers crossed we can keep getting more teams signed up before we get to that date in march yeah and again we were mentioning just before we start recording about how it's kind of come full circle in that katie is essentially doing a workshop from look good feel better in the near future yeah i know when, when they kind of uh, said could, could i help promote it i said i actually can't believe she's actually signed up for a workshop <laughs> at maggie's and she will be there and and it's amazing that these are kind of trained volunteers that are just doing this kind of helping people kind of with their self-esteem with confidence you know and I suppose visibly people with cancer, it does change, you know, hair loss, eye, they lose their eyelashes, some people lose their eyebrows, it kind of affects their nails and, and all of, of that thing that's their skin. Um, so I think if you can just help one person feel a little bit confident or whatever they need, kind of women, men and young adults, no matter who it is, it's really important. So Katie was really excited. One of um, her friends actually who is going through cancer actually went on the workshop and absolutely loved it and said she had such a lovely day kind of meeting people as well that were going through cancer and sharing stories and I think that's what it's also about them, them kind of getting together and kind of speaking to each other and people that are going through the exact same thing you know I can tell her all day long she looks absolutely fantastic and I love her but I think sometimes she just needs to speak to someone else going through that journey and just someone that it resonates with a little bit more so I think that's what she's really looking forward to as well kind of going on the day and kind of meeting other people. Is, is, is that one of those important things as well? Because we talk so often about community and having your support networks around you, but then finding people who who are on the same journey as you or have been on the same journey as you, just to tap into that, that must really help her as well. I think for Katie, that has been absolutely huge and it's been massive for her on her journey. When she was in hospital, the, she was in hospital, I think maybe two to three weeks in the end, so quite a long period. So there was lots of women kind of in her area of the ward that were coming and going and a lot of them got quite close and she's still in contact with two of the ladies uh, currently now and kind of they're discussing their journey and kind of their chemotherapy and their side effects and they speak to each other each week and just kind of help each other along the way and then they all keep saying as soon as they all get through their sixth round they're all meeting up and going for a drink to kind of celebrate so for her it's been huge and kind of seeing her meet these incredible women that are going through it and all have their different battles and that's something kind of I can never give her she has to get it from them so I've been kind of really proud of her for, for kind of reaching out and using them as well. Yeah and in, in terms of the, the raising awareness side of things what what types of things should people be more aware of be really looking out for yeah I, I think probably just realizing that what somebody's going through with cancer you know I think sometimes like I said you kind of just see them visibly but actually emotionally the side effects that they're going through people need more support we need more funding and um, you know if people can put things on their social media if they can speak about it more just even word of mouth nowadays kind of getting the voice out there people go online click on links look into things more see if people need more help in communities you know that they're all the things that we kind of need to keep raising awareness for these kind of charities that are doing so much especially that are being run by volunteers it, it's so important that we keep them going because if we don't have these support charities who who are these people going to uh, lock into who are they going to use you know the nhs has so much going on and, and is under so much at the minute that we need these kind of separate support charities as well so the more people can get speaking about it promoting it and especially young people like i said it, it's that age factor as well you see a lot of things and on social media at the minute and a lot of things online and, and we need to make sure that we have also these things that go on social media it isn't isn't just the dancers on tiktok and the food 
I love to see in the sausage dogs. It's it's also making sure that kind of us as young adults do get things out for that next generation, you know, female health. And we're promoting things like this and, and workshops and making sure that we can use social media as well to other advantages. Cat videos for me. Um, <laughs> but, but like like you say, just... I suppose there's always that natural instinct, again, human human character, if you like, to to avoid and dodge difficult conversations sometimes. And I suppose is that one of the things that we can really, again, make progress on? And social media is a brilliant way to do that. Yeah, definitely. And and, and I've, I've only got kind of, I think, 10,000 followers. And a lot of it is obviously netball related. And, and I did actually get a tweet that said, you know, it mine's getting maybe a little bit heavier, you know, I'm promoting other things now. It isn't just netball related. It isn't just my sausage dog anymore. I'm not on a walk as much. And obviously that's still on there. But for me now, I, I am promoting a lot more things about cancer research and, and kind of the things that are coming up, cancer months or raising awareness. You know, I'm going to keep plugging that to the end. And and obviously for me, I'm a massive um stonewall champion and lgbtq plus so i'm always raising awareness on there as well so yeah my social media isn't just as as relaxed as it used to be and, and i did get the tweet that kind of said it just me is this getting too much think of the young girls that are following you as well but for me that's the whole point why i am doing it a lot of them are probably from the age maybe kind of 13 up to 20 that maybe do follow me so that is the generation i want to tap in even more uh, yeah and like you say that the, the bigger education that there is i think that can only be a positive thing and you, you touched on an important point before about supporting those charities and you know even my per- personal experience with millen has been a massive thing in my family's life the last few years and every, it's no secret that a lot of people are struggling right now with the way the economy is the way a lot of the world is right now and the price of everything but important to not forget those charities that like you say are predominantly supported by volunteers and need those funds to keep doing that vital work yeah 100 percent, and that is what's difficult isn't it with the with the crisis at the minute and and the cost of everything everything has increased but you're right we we just can't forget it and i just keep thinking at the minute now i've I've set up kind of my direct debit for a few and it's kind of two pounds a week and, and that's what i can give hopefully that can just keep increasing as it goes on and if anyone can afford anything even if it's just a one off payment of two pound five pound just that week and you might have a little bit left over at the end of the month if you could please Please give that to a charity that just be absolutely incredible and and i suppose a few uh, places have donations as well you know sometimes you receive the bag through the door where you can just donate some kind of clothes or, or anything like that you, you might have in the house that you were kind of going to go to a charity you know, give things maybe that way it doesn't always have to be kind of actual money and funds you can kind of donate things if maybe you're getting rid of some things in your wardrobe so there's lots of ways that you can still give back and um yeah fingers crossed people can do that even with the cost of living yeah, like I say, it, it's just it's such important work. And to to briefly touch on something that else you've mentioned, support that you've had from like something like netball, your club, uh, players around you as well. And you know, again, we often touch on the community feel within sport, and that's probably one of the you know as much as we all enjoy elite sport and watching our teams win and things like that. But the community aspect has so many important strands to it in life. And is that something that's really come true again for you? Not saying it wasn't there before, but has just become this such such an important support network for the two of you to really lean on when you need it most. Yeah, hundred percent. I think for me, I've always kind of known the netball family has obviously been great and kind of linking in with me just as kind of a, an athlete and as not as something separate, but since this has all happened it, it's kind of been next level the amount of, of support we've had and we've had a, so many messages Kate has had kind of so many knocks on the door that will just be kind of gift bags on people and just kind of sometimes flowers and people thinking of her and it's been absolutely incredible and I can't thank people enough and and people offering just advice and, and things that maybe would have worked for them or their family member and or just offering kind of love and support and just kind of knowing that we can access people sometimes you know some person may offer this advice and we go how did you do that did that work what kind of journey were you on and having another kind of network for her to use is really important so I got to see kind of lots of people at the weekend was obviously the first game to actually physically meet more people and it was quite a big arena in Nottingham so 
I had lots of lovely people to speak to and actually kind of hear their journey or even how it's helped them sharing Katie's story. So I think obviously making yourself quite vulnerable as well. We obviously were both a bit worried how that would be and, and if it would be kind of maybe too much. But I think on Saturday, it definitely made it worthwhile and receiving the messages. Actually, it is an important message for us to get out and kind of share her story. So it kind of made it more worthwhile. Hmm. Does that almost reaffirm, like you say, initially quite a scary thing to do to put yourselves out there in such a vulnerable way but reaffirm that what you're doing is so important yeah definitely definitely did that on Saturday for me I kind of rang her and shared some of the stories on the way home and was saying some of the things people had mentioned and it kind of did it kind of solidified that that actually this this is the right thing to do this is what we need to do to kind of get your story out and promote it and promote female health and and just make sure we you making sure that younger generation raising more awareness to more symptoms that people may have yeah absolutely my final couple of bits for you in terms of the event uh, in march um from your perspective why, why should people come down why is it such a great thing to be a part of I think just in general, being involved in kind of a netball tournament, even if it's kind of just you going on your own or you're going with a group of friends, just kind of looking after your health, being kind of outdoors, playing netball, physical activity. It's something that I absolutely love, boost my confidence, boost my self-esteem. Um, I think that's really important. But then you're also raising awareness and doing it for amazing charity. So it's kind of a win-win moment on all aspects. And even if you did manage to, to sign up on your own, I think that's absolutely incredible. Hopefully you'll meet have new people, meet some new friends, find your way kind of back to netball and, and even in the future then maybe find an, another back to netball scheme and start doing it more regularly. So obviously female health is huge, just making sure it doesn't always have to be you're going to a gym and you're on a treadmill and you're on your own and, and, and some people don't like that doing it in that sense. So kind of finding kind of a sport, a team sport, where you can also have that community aspect aspects and and just meet people I, I think is something I'll massively promote so yeah get yourself down there if you have a few friends maybe sign up as a few of you and just go out there and have a good day sums up the power of sport perfectly and I know we're biased on this show obviously we wouldn't have set this podcast up if we weren't sports fans ourselves but you know neither of us are elite athletes but sport has still given us so much in terms of friends community my career to a certain extent and I say it just sums up just how powerful it can be. My final one for you, kind of from the two of you, you and Katie, if, whether you had a message to others who might find themselves in a similar situation or who have a loved one in a similar situation, because it can be so often to work out what the right thing to say is when it's someone you love rather than yourself. And, you know, there's a whole complex number of difficulties that I'm sure you faced along the way and what your message to those people would be? I think it would be make sure you keep communicating no matter what it is, no matter what kind of you, your message is. And if it was to a loved one, nothing's wrong, nothing's right. Say it, be open with each other, explain how you're feeling at the time because that is what is so important to kind of get through it together and everyone will be at a different section throughout the journey. People could be angry, sad, happy, frustrated, and you'll all kind of be there at different times and no one's doing it the right way or the wrong way. So I think it's just make sure you keep communicating, keep explaining how you feel. And like I said, there will be so many hard days that you have to get through as as, as a one person or a family or ha whatever it is. But there also will be some really good days and some good moments as well. And and when you get them, really cling on to them and really enjoy them. And for me as well, my good days could have been something going away, going on a trip or doing this. Whereas now it's going for a dog walk, going for a coffee. You just mean talking to my mum on the phone, little things like that that are so important that, that aren't always seem to be the big things or the big moments actually for us now are some of the best things being able to have a glass of wine at a pub on a Sunday is a nice little treat they're the best memories and best moments so if you if you if you can have them just just enjoy every section of it very well said and wholeheartedly back that as well thank you Nat so much for uh for, for coming on to the show like I said it's such an inspirational journey that the two of you were on but I just think that the way you're able to tell it and just share that insight and and what it has been like for others can just do such a world of good for people is it like we, we often say see it to be it in terms of a sporting sense but if you see other people going through something challenging and something tough 
and something you can't really imagine will happen to you. I think that's another something, an extra strand that people can draw strength from as well. So huge credit to the both of you and hope that, you know, the, what remains of the treatment goes well and you do find some time in the near future to have a bit of calm and just enjoy life at the same time. Um, my final message to everyone, again, the, the Look Good, Feel Better netball event is Sunday, March 26th. As I mentioned, the link is in the show notes of this episode if people want to check out more. Uh, that's all the links to sign up to as well. And pretty sure it'll be a very, very good event. A huge thank you to Nat and to England Netball for helping us bring this episode and interview together. I'm sure everyone can agree just how powerful and inspirational both her and Katie are. These are not easy topics to talk about, but that approach will undoubtedly help so many facing such difficult circumstances. A reminder as well about the Look Good, Feel Better charity netball tournament on Sunday, March the 26th at Warwick University. The link to the event is in the show notes of this episode where you can find out all the information on how to sign up. It's sure to be a brilliant day. That is almost it from us this week. If you enjoyed the episode, please share on social media and shout about it. It's how a show like ours can grow. And you can also follow our accounts on Instagram, Facebook, and on Twitter. All of our handles are at Pod. Thank you for tuning in. The show will be back with another brand new interview for you next week. We'll see you then.